All right, questions. So that's either really good or really not good. So we've talked about traversal in three different forms, insertion into binary trees, height and balance. And I'm hoping if you have no questions, it's because you've already coded those up and you understand them and it's working well because we're going to go on from there today. And if you haven't already coded these up and gotten into working with these structures, then talking about what we're talking about today is not going to make a lot of sense because we're going to go heavy on deletion and we're just going to start slinging pointers around and making new nodes and moving things around inside a tree to delete nodes. Um, and this is where it gets particularly complicated. And then from this, we're going to go on to balancing trees. Um, and so we want to be pretty comfortable with the basic mechanics of, of these nodes with two children and so on and so forth. So if questions come up, definitely ask. Yeah. So I'm just kind of confused. Like, when we're printing and inserting, they're not going to be the same. Because there's like the left, right node and the right, left node. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of confused, like, when you add the nodes, like, is it just getting So, so here's, here's the effect of adding. Um, you have an empty tree you want to insert. So let's make some numbers we're going to insert. So 10, 5, uh, 3, 20, 40, 11, and negative 16. Now let's build a tree with those. So we start off, our tree is empty. We want to add a 10. There's really no option except put it at the root. So that's our tree. OK, we want to add a 5. It's got to go to the left of the 10. There's nothing on the left right now. That's where the 5 will go. When you want to add a 3, we'll start at the 10, move to the left, get to the 5, move to the left. There's nothing there. That's where the 3 will end up. OK, this is always the same procedure. Basically, start at the root. Put in a 20, move to the right, that's where the 20 goes. 40, go to the right of 10, go to the right of 20, there's the 40. 11, go to the right of 10, go to the left of 20, there's the 11. And the negative 16, go to the left, go to the left, go to the left, there's your negative 16. So for that set of data, this is the tree that would, you would end up with. Okay, And this is what that recursive algorithm that we were looking at yesterday will come up with. Because when we inserted that 16, it would basically say, OK, insert a 16 into this tree, which says insert a 16 into this tree, which says insert a 16 into an empty tree, which makes a 16, makes it the left child of that last node. The traversal, though, is, is three different things. Um, there's three ways to traverse. It's always left, right, but when we visit, the root node changes. Okay, so this is in order, this is pre-order, this is post-order. If you do in order and you traverse your tree, your data will come out sorted. Okay, if you do pre-order or post-order, it's hard to say, but it generally won't look sorted. Um, and and it's, it's always recursive, so left-right node means traverse this left right node, then traverse that left right node, then print a 10. And you just build it up recursively like that. Does that address what you were asking? Yeah. Okay. So is the root node always going to be the first piece of data? The way we're doing it, yeah, because you start with a null tree, how do you insert into it? You just make that node the root. And when we add things, we never get to change the root. We always added leaf nodes, right? So we basically follow down until we get to a leaf node, and, and that's where we put our data in. So now if we want to put in a 15, we go to the right, we go to the left, we go to the right. There's your 15. If we start balancing trees, if we start trying to keep these trees, you know, very shallow and wide, then the root node can change. But as it is with our... our first insert algorithm, right, the root's always fixed forevermore once it changes from null to not null. Are we going to do something to change that for this assignment? 
we're going to allow deletions, and deletions can also change the root, because if I want to delete a 10, that 10 is going to go away. The tree still needs a root, so something else will become the root. Do you have a null root? No. Okay. If the root's null, it can't have any children, because there's no left or right fields or data field. You can't have, like, a sentinel? No. I mean, you could, but no, not the way we're doing it. Okay. Oh, you string compare. So string compare. Right. So if S one comes before S two, this will be negative. So it's like um, like doing S one less than S two. And whatever string compare gives you, that's how you should be sorting your data. Okay, don't worry about converting case, don't treat numbers specially, don't do anything weird with punctuation or anything like that. Just throw your strings to string compare, whatever it tells you, that's, that's your reality. Yeah? Just so I can get an idea, how would those print exactly? How would what print? Like left and right. Oh. Um, so left node right will print out negative 16, 3, 5, 10, 11, 15, 20, and 40. Um, that's the in order, and I know that just because I know in order is going to be sorted. Um, left right node is going to say first traverse this left right node which means first traverse the left subtree which means first traverse this so this is going to start with negative 16 and then it'll traverse the right child which is null and then it will pin out the node which is three that completes the left child of this tree there's nothing on the right so then it will pin out the root node that completes the left child of the original tree now we traverse the right child which means first traverse the left child and to traverse this, first do the left node, <coughs> which is null, then the right node, then the root. So that's the left subtree of this. Then traverse the right subtree, which will be 40, then print out the root. Now we've done the left subtree and the right subtree of the original. Finally, we print the root node, which is 10. That is something eventually you'll be able to do on paper or in your head, but that's not a necessary skill other than for checking. But you can check your work by using the sample code also. Um, node left right would say first print the root node, and then traverse the left, which will start with the root, and then traverse the left, which will start with the root, and then traverse the left. And there's nothing on the right, so that's easy. So we've done the node, we've done the left, now we have to do this in NLR order. So print the root node, then traverse the left, which says first do the left subtree, then the root node, and then the right. So now we've done the node, we've done the left, finally do the right subtree. And now we finish that and we're done. And it's not clear what the meaning of these things are. The meaning of left node, right is pretty clear. It's the stuff is in increasing order. Um, but let me show you one, one use for, um, for this post-order traversal. Suppose we have an arithmetic expression. We said when we started talking about trees, we could write a tree to represent this, where the roots of each little subtree is an operator and the children are the things we're operating on. So this expression says I want a 2 and a 3 added together. I want a 4 and a 5 added together. I want those multiplied. And then I want a 6 and a 7 multiplied. And then I want these things added. Let me throw some extra parentheses in here. So this tree represents that arithmetic expression. So if we traverse this in left-right node order, we get the following. Go all the way to the left is a 2, and then go to the right is a 3, 
and then do the root node. That's the left subtree. Do the same thing with the right subtree. That's going to be a 4, a 5, and a plus, and then do the root. So that's the whole left subtree of the original. Traverse the right subtree in left right node order. That's a 6, 7 star, and then do the root node. That's a plus. Well, if you had an HP calculator in the 70s, and somebody tried to borrow your calculator who didn't have an HP, they couldn't use your calculator because early HP calculators did not work the way most calculators work today. They used something called reverse Polish notation. The way these old calculators worked was you would type in your two numbers and then you would say plus or minus or star or slash. You would give it the two operands first and then the operator. And it was kind of a cool way to work because you never needed parentheses if you knew how to use this and other people wouldn't be able to use your calculator. Well, this is reverse Polish notation for this expression. And the way you read this is take a 2 and a 3 and add them together, that gives you a 5. Take a 4 and a 5, add that together, that gives you a 9. Take your last two results, 5 and 9, multiply them, that gives you a 45. Take a 6 and a 7, multiply that, that gives you a 42. And now take your last two results and add those together. That gives you an 87, that's your final answer. That's what that's actually equal to. And this is how most compilers and interpreters will process arithmetic expressions. They'll take the original expression, basically turn it into a tree, and then do a post-order traversal of that tree to get the reverse Polish notation. And then this is really easy to evaluate with a stack. We'll go back and talk about that another day. But basically when you have an operand, you push it on the stack. When you have an operator, you pop two things from the stack, apply the operator, push the result back on the stack. And if you do that, when you're done, you find an 87 comes off the stack at the end. And that's your final answer. So post-order traversal is used for that. Pre-order traversal, I don't really know what that's used for. But it's nice to talk about because it's, it's there. I guess so, yeah. Maybe. Reverse, reverse. All right, cool. Other questions? All right, well, let's talk about tree deletion. And so on. All right, most of what we're going to worry about is deleting the root. Because if we're trying to delete a node other than a root, we can do it recursively. If I want to delete the number 15 from this tree, I know 15 sits to the left of 20, so 15 is somewhere in this tree. I'm just going to call my delete function, say delete 15 from this, and whatever tree I get back, I'll just make 20 point to that on its left side. Okay, so I can delete recursively, except when I'm trying to delete the root. Because if I'm trying to delete the root, I need to delete 20 from this tree. If I pass this to my delete function, say delete 20 from this, I haven't made any progress in my recursive calls. I'm just going to keep passing this to myself, saying delete 20 from this tree. Right, But if 20 is somewhere in one of these subtrees, I can recurse. So the whole essence of deleting from a tree really comes down to how do you delete from the root of the tree. And we could just, you know, remove the 20 and put something else in its place. But remember, we want this to be a binary search tree, which means everything to the left of a node is smaller, everything to the right of a node is larger. So to delete the root, yeah, I definitely need to get rid of this 20. I'm going to free up memory. Um, 
and I don't want to do a whole lot of work. I don't want to move a bunch of things around in my tree. I want to do as little work as possible. Um, so here's, here's a question to think about for a minute. What value could I put in place of that 20 that would not greatly disturb my tree and would keep things ordered the way a binary search tree has to be ordered? Could you take the rightmost node from the left subtree? Would Which would be? Which in this case would be? Nineteen. So if I put nineteen in the root, does that work? Right? Because nineteen is the biggest node over here. So if I put that up here, I know everything over here is going to be smaller than nineteen. And since nineteen came from the left, it's smaller than twenty, which means everything over here is bigger than nineteen. Right? So that'll preserve that binary search tree property. So that's one possibility is put a nineteen up here. There's a second possibility, 25. 25. Same reasoning, I could take my 25 from here, and since 25 is the smallest thing in this subtree, if I put it up here, everything on the right is going to be bigger than that root 25, and since it came from the right, it's bigger than the root, so everything here, which is smaller than 20, will definitely be smaller than 25. So we got two options. We can take the largest thing from the left subtree or the smallest thing from the right subtree. Okay, so this is, this is critically important. Um, to delete the root. Replace it with the largest node in the left subtree. Okay, that gets an important flash on the screen. Um, this is the way you have to do it for PA4. You lose points if you don't use that algorithm. Okay, it's normally perfectly fine to take the smallest tree from the right and use that in place of the node, you will lose points on the delete part. Okay, I want you to use the largest node from the left. And that's going to be the only legitimate way to delete the root, with one exception, which is if there is no left subtree. Because if there's nothing to the left of the root, there is no largest node in the left subtree because there is no left subtree. But other than that one edge case, if you want to delete a root, you have to replace it with the largest node from the left subtree. So there's no left subtree we're creating the other method. Ah, uh, so if there's no subtree, then I want you to do something very specific. If there's no left subtree, just move the root. If this is what our tree looks like and we're trying to delete the root, just change your root to whatever is on the right of the root and get rid of that 20. So this would just go to, right? And that's really easy to do. You don't have to move anything around. You basically free up the memory associated with the 20 and you just return the address of 20's right child as the new root. So here's a pop quiz for fame, glory, and fortune. If your tree looks like this and I want to delete the root, what should I do? Exactly, right? Take the largest node from the left subtree and make that the root. So your tree should look like this. Okay. 
Yes, you can effectively delete the 20 by just changing the root to be the 10. Don't do that. You won't get points. Okay. I'm going to be a stickler on this. So if there's anything to the left, replace the root with the largest node from the left subtree. So when you turn 18 into the root, are you essentially making... Like 18 is the root, and then 18's left is 15. Mm -hmm. I mean, 15's left is 10. Okay. Yeah, so so we'll we'll build up the pseudocode, but let's let's try some manipulation. So here's our root, which is 20. Okay, so so I'm going to call this largest. And I'm going to call this prior. And I'm going to call the root root. Okay, and I want to delete the root, so my goal is to replace the 20 with a 19. So what are some statements I would write in C, or something C-like, that would achieve that? And I'm assuming I've got, you know, struct node stars with these names pointing to those nodes. But I already have a pointer to prior and largest. But yeah, we don't want to free the root too soon. So what else needs to be set up? Because so far I haven't changed the tree. There's nothing pointing to the 30 or the 10. And the 19 is still a child of 18. So we got to do some more steps also. You want to change the root. Okay. So largest left should be whatever is currently to the left of the root. So I can set largest left equal to root left. And largest right equal to root right. And then set prior right. to null. Okay, so largest left equals root left. Well, that's setting this up to point there. And largest right equals root right. That's setting the right child to point there. And then prior right equals null, so we're getting rid of that. And now we can free the root. And then we return largest as the root. So now this is the root of our tree. To the left, it's pointing to all of this stuff. To the right, it's pointing to all of this stuff. And 18 is no longer pointing to 19. Yeah? Uh, could you just change the data of the root to 19? That would look like it works, but that's not what we want to do. OK, for one thing, we've got, we've got three strings, plate, first, and last name. Right, and they've already got space allocated, so we would need to free that space, reallocate space based on the new data, and so on and so forth. So in general, when we're doing this, we want to actually move the nodes rather than just copy the data. But for this example with integer data, yeah, that would that would work fine. Is that ever done, or is it pretty much best practice to just delete the, the node? I can think of cases where you would do that. I mean, it would be faster so in the some ways. On for binary trees, like with C++ this library has some optimization to do that in certain cases? You could have a library that would do that, but you would need to make sure the user knew that's what was happening. Because yeah. sometimes, um, you know, in general, the things you're storing in the tree are probably just going to be pointers to a structure. And if you just copy that pointer over, that may not do what you want it to do. So this gets into the notion of shallow copies and deep copies, which is a whole other topic. But if you have a structure that contains other structures inside it and you just copy the pointer to that structure, you're not copying the stuff inside the structure itself. And unless you know the nature of that structure, it's hard to guarantee that you're going to copy everything. 
So we usually move the nodes. All right, so lots of things that can go wrong here, right? If you free the root too soon, this is going to give you questionable results. If you forget to do this, you've got a loop in your tree. If you start from the root, which is largest, and you follow down to the 10, the 15, the 18, and you follow to the right child, you get back to the root, and suddenly your traversal is printing out forever, okay? Lots of little details that can go wrong. But again, you know, make a picture, figure out what you want to have happen here, write code that corresponds to it. Yeah. So we kind of skimmed over it at the beginning. So if you're deleting something that isn't the root, you say. Yeah, we'll come back to that. Okay. Okay, that's going to be easier than all of this because um, we'll do it recursively. All right. Let me let me show you one more complication. on the right that's not going to come into play all right here's our tree we want to delete the root node 20 so this is root this is largest and this is prior Yeah, what is happening with that 12? Um, yeah. All right, that's a good binary search tree. 15, 11, 12, 14. Okay. Um, so this is the largest node in the left subtree is the 14. The node right before it is prior. The root node is 20. Okay, we want to delete the root node 20. We're going to replace it with the 14. We're going to change 14's left child to point to the 10, right? So it picks up the root's left subtree. That's going to orphan the 13. 13 has no parent now. Yeah. Oh man, I'm having like a heck of a time here. Um, No, that's not going to work. All right, last try. How's that? And then we can throw some things over here. Good. So here's the root. Here's the largest, here's the prior. All right, largest node in the left subtree is 15, so the 15 should go up and replace the root. If we do that, the 13 gets orphaned. Okay, so 13 needs a parent. We can always make 13 the right child of prior, right? Prior's right child is going to go away. That's the 15. We know that this stuff is bigger than prior because it's in prior subtree. And we know that prior is not going to have anything on the right because we're moving the root. So instead of making prior right null, we want to make prior right equal to largest left. So this makes things slightly more complicated, but not too much. Yeah? So instead of um, 13, we have like 8, but then there was so say say that again. So like if instead of thirteen you had like number eight. Right here? Yeah. So uh, that can't happen. Oh. Right? Everything over here has got to be bigger than ten. Alright, so largest left. 
is going to take on root left and largest right will be whatever root is pointing to on the right. Um, prior right is going to um, take on whatever is to the left of largest. Right, it's going to adopt largest orphaned child. So prior right equals largest left. So this basically picks up that subtree. And then this causes largest to point to the 10 and the 25. And then free the root and return largest. And it takes some convincing to, to believe that this will work. Um, but since this is the largest node in the tree, this cannot have anything to its right. Because if it did, it would have to be bigger than 15. 15 would not be the largest node in this subtree. So there's nothing to 15's right. So when we move 15 and give it a new pair of children, we're not orphaning anything on the right. At most, we're going to orphan a left child. And the node right before this Right, that parent up there is going to lose its right child so it can adopt the largest node's left child. So this will work out perfectly. And it's very easy to code. There's no special cases here, right? Because if, if, um, if largest doesn't have anything on the left, right, then this simply sets prior's right to be null, which was what we were doing before. So this is, this is perfectly safe. And after you've done these assignments, you can free the root. We don't need its value anymore for setting up largest children. And then just return the largest as the node, uh, the root node. So this is the case where you know we're moving around memory addresses, right? But we want to be able to think of them as nodes and things that nodes are pointing to. But these are really just long integers. Right, they're just locations in memory. Everything here is a pointer to a struct node. So when we do this, we're actually saying that the location in memory that this node points to is supposed to be whatever this node was pointing to on the left. Right, that sets up that, that dotted line link there. All right, so challenges. One, finding the largest node in the left subtree. Two, remembering the prior node. Three, edge cases. And then four, Deleting something that's not a root. Does the relevance do the find largest node iteratively or recursively? Iterative. Well, you can do it recursively. Yeah. You can you can you can do it either. No, I have no I have no preference. Yeah. You can do it whichever way you like. Um, recursively won't go very deep, so that's fine. Right, so how do we find the largest node in the left subtree? Well, first you have to find the left subtree. And remember, if this is null, that's an edge case. Right, we're just going to move the root down to 20's right subchild. And if 20 doesn't have anything on the right, then this is the only node in the tree, and the right subchild is null. And so we'll return null, which is the right thing to do. So assuming that, that 20 has something on the left, right, we have a tree. We need to find the largest node and the node immediately prior to it. Okay. How do we do that? Start from the root, just move to the right as far as you can. When you can't move any further, that's the largest node. 
The prior node is the one that you saw right before you got to that largest node. So if you're using your previous current trick from linked lists, that works fine here. If you have a case like this, this is going to be your largest node. This is going to be your prior node. Right, so you, so you may have a case where the first node, the root node, is actually the prior one, and the largest node is just one level down. Yeah, so if it just looks like this, well, in this case, so there's stuff over here. We want to delete the root. The largest node in the left subtree is 10. So you're going to replace 20 with a 10, but you're going, you've got a special case here. You don't have a prior node, right? So, so our algorithm is on another sheet of paper. Our algorithm is have the prior node's right child point to the largest node's left. Well, if, if this is the largest node, we don't have a prior node, right? If we started off with null or something, that's going to seg fault. So if this is the largest node and it has nothing before it, in other words, if it's the immediate predecessor, then we don't have to change its left child, just change its right child to point to root's right child. Return this as the new root. Okay, so that's an edge case. So remembering the prior node, and there's an edge case if there's no prior node. If you're working from the root of the tree, the prescription is go to the left and then start moving to the right and find the largest node. Right, Go to the right until you can't go to the right anymore. But if there's nothing to the right of this first node, right, that's that edge case. Okay, and then deleting non-roots. So our deletion algorithm looks basically like this. And again, I'm doing integers here. But for strings, you would use string compare to find the plate. So if the root nodes data is the thing that you're trying to delete, do everything we've been talking about for the past 25 minutes. All right, find the largest node in the left subtree, move it up to the root. And return. So we're done. That's the base case for the recursion. Okay, otherwise, we want to delete the number 13. Right? Look at your root, figure out if you're deleting from the left or the right subtree. 13 is smaller than 20, we need to delete from this tree. Okay? Um, so if root data um, is less than, is, if our number is less than root data, delete from the left. So call your delete function, pass it root arrow left, and the number you want to delete. And that will return a tree from which the 13 has been removed. And that tree is supposed to be the left subchild of the root. So set root arrow left 
equal to that, and then return the root. Okay, otherwise delete from the right. So I've said root right equal to the result of deleting your number from the right subtree. And then return the root. So if it's not the root, we just use recursion to, to delete the node, right? Either delete it from the left subtree or the right subtree. I'm assuming the node is in my tree. If the node's not in my tree, I'm going to sig fault eventually, right? If I pass in a null here, first thing I'm going to do is check to see if root's data matches my number. Well, if root is null, that's going to sig fault right there. Or if I'm trying to delete something to the left of a tree that only has a single root, then this root arrow left is going to be null. And same thing when I get in here, I'll seg fault. So this only works if, if we know that the number is in the tree and we'll eventually find it. If we don't know that, we could put in some conditions here, like you know, if the root is null, just return. Um, or you know, probably better, just call your search function before you call delete. Don't ever call delete if you're trying to delete something that's not in the tree. But not calling search and taking care of that edge case would give you a little bit better performance? Obviously. Yeah, probably. Yeah, half as much work, probably. And then to use this in your main program, right, you again have to do it like this. Delete's always going to give you back a root. So, you know, you. You initialize your root like that. You call add, presumably to add some stuff to it. When you want to delete, you pass the root and the number you're deleting. And the return from delete, that becomes the new root. Okay, You have to do that because if you're deleting the actual root node of the tree and you don't make this assignment, right, your root variable in main is not going to change value. right? Because you pass by value. Whatever root was pointing to before this call, it's going to be pointing to after this call. Well, if you're deleting the root of a tree, then that root has to point to some other location in memory. So you gotta do that whether you're deleting or you're adding. And eventually when you're balancing. All right, so this, this is a lot of writing for something that's really easy to describe in words, okay? To delete the root of a tree, replace it with the largest value from the left subtree. That's the whole delete algorithm. Unless there's no left subtree, then just move the root to the right subtree of the root. And to delete something that's not the root, just delete it from the appropriate subtree, either on the left or the right, using a recursive call to delete. Okay. So all the rest of this that I've written down and said, not important. Okay, it's just an example of how you do this fundamental one sentence description of deleting a node, which is replace it with the largest thing from the left subtree or recurse. So you may end up with, with things that look like this in your code, right? But don't start with, with snippets of code that I've scribbled up here and try to figure out how that works in your program, right? Um, it may not work in your program. It depends how you set things up, right? So, so always try to write the code based on how you want to manipulate the data structure. 
Okay, don't try to build your data structure around a snippet of code. All right, yeah. So I have, is it about the add function? Okay. Sometimes I'm a little confused when it comes to now, like whether I should be using a struct node or a struct node star. Yeah, just like node or that's what I'm kind of confused about. Okay, so, so if you want a pointer, right, then you need to, um, almost, almost always we're going to malloc size of struct node. Okay, if, if we're got a tree and we want to make a new node that hangs off here, right, I'm going to need the malloc size of struct node. Okay, so I have space for the three strings and the left and right pointers. Um, if I want a temporary variable that's going to point to something so I can march through and find the largest thing, I don't need to malloc anything. Right, if I just have struct node star temp, and eventually I'm going to say temp equals root arrow left, right? I never need to do a malloc for temp because it's just taking on a value. Um, I don't think there's a case where we need to malloc a size of struct node star for this. We had to do that in PA3 because of the hash table, mm -hmm. but that's, that's an unusual case. So I think it's pretty much always size of struct node. But most of our declarations are struct node star, so if we have a type def, that's what we're using there. All right, think about this, start coding some things up, bring some questions tomorrow, okay? Um, I don't expect this to, to totally click the first one or two times, um, but you gotta work with it to figure out where the questions are for yourself and then ask those questions. Does that make sense? All right, cool. I will see you next time. If you're in 215, do not forget to turn in your 215 assignment before 1230. Assignment closes at 1230. Um, I sent a reminder this morning.